Is that the universal? What's that? These numbers are the universal? Oh yeah, I'm going to show you what these numbers exactly mean. Okay. But it deals with something in terms of the amount of data uh -huh. inside the distribution, okay. which will be bell-shaped. But only, does this deal with skewed data? No. Good, only bell-shaped distributions. So I'm going to have to come up with something in real life that is a distribution that's bell-shaped. Um, I think I'm going to do the height of men, all right, because that one it is bell-shaped. But I think I'll just do ages like 20 to 30 because I mean, what happens to the height of a man? He gets like age 65, 75, 85. What happens to his height? They decrease. Shrink. Start shrink. Yeah. So I'm going to just say, all right, age, age of men 20 to 30 years old. Sound good? All right. Well, to me, I'm doing a population. I'm talking about all men. It's roughly about 70 inches. You real? Yeah. The book has it at 69.6. I'm going to use 70 inches. For our first example, just a neat, neat integer. <coughs> the standard deviation is three. And why am I using these Greek letters? Because I'm talking about all men, right? Mm -hmm. Now, and I know I just introduced these symbols to you, so we should probably next one write the words. This is the what? The population mean. And this symbol is the population. Oh, we can abbreviate. How about SD? Does that work? Mm -hmm. I would just put SD. That's the population standard deviation. And you and I are going to draw a bell curve to represent this. We're going to draw a picture. And then I'll talk about the 68, the 95, and the 99.7. OK? But now when you see that, the mean height of man, 70 inches. I mean, that's 5 feet, 10 inches tall. But the standard deviation, on average, <coughs> each man is about how far from that mean? 3 inches. OK? All right. So. First thing is, I'm going to need you to draw a bell. Yeah, it doesn't have to be perfect. Mine isn't. <laughs> draw a bell. And put a tick mark right in the middle, right there. And we're going to do three tick marks to the right, right? One, two, and make this third tick mark fall about where this thing's starting to flatten out. You'll see a ton of these images in the book or in my Canvas course in the notes. And then on this side of this middle tick, I need you to put three tick marks. Spread them out. One, two, and then that third one, Evan, just make sure it's, you know, roughly right where it was. Doesn't have to be perfect. So here's the distribution of men. I'm going to label these tick marks. Sound good? Let's start with that one. I bet you someone knows what number goes there. Look at those two numbers. Who's smack dab in the middle? 70. 70! Everyone agree? Mm -hmm. The mean, the middle. 70. Now, on average, everything was three standard deviations of the mean. So I'm going to have to go one <coughs> of those three. Right. Mm -hmm. Something I'm going to add. Add one of these guys. <laughs> that might be confusing to you. I'm going to add one of those guys. But that was equal to a what? So 70 plus 3, what's that number? 73. All right. I've got to add it again. I've got to add another 3. What would this be? Remember, I don't want to confuse anybody. You go, what do I just do? I added two of those, didn't I? <laughs> so the language is I added two standard deviations. Oh, this is two standard deviations of the, of the mean. What will this be? Sunday night? Mm -hmm. So I want you to read, I just understand I just kept adding three. Hey, if you like to use the math terminology, what did I do to get to here? From the mean, I added what? One to get that. To get this, I did what? I added two of those things. What's that? Oh, the standard deviation. And for this, what I do? I took the mean and I added what? Three of these funny things. You don't have to write that down. But you might see this in a book and go, what does that mean? And you go, oh, that's easy. I get it. This is the height of a man who's 79 inches tall. I mean, that's six feet, seven inches tall. That's tall. Anybody know somebody that tall? I have a friend. Look at <laughs> People know people this tall. Well, that man, I'm talking about one individual. He is three standard deviations above the mean. That's how we talk, right? Or if anybody <laughs> knows someone in here who is six feet, four inches tall. All right, that individual, he, he's two standard deviations above the mean, right? Cool. Hey, let's go on this side. Guess what I have to do? 
Subtract. Subtract. What's this? 67. What's this? And this? All right. So I'll get this jargon out of the way. We'll keep that picture. We're going to highlight it. There it is. There's the distribution of that. Now, do you agree there are people in this world who are actually taller than us? So I know I ended by curve here, but it really goes on intimately, doesn't it? Because there could be a man who's 8 feet 6 inches tall, right? <laughs> or there would be a man who's like 3 feet tall. Absolutely. So if you want, you can put a slight arrow there if you want. Just then, okay, this really keeps going. But there's not much out there. There's not many people beyond that, true? And there's not many people beyond this. That's 5 feet 1 inch. There's not many people, you know, shorter than 5 feet 1 inch. All right, now. What are these numbers? Go, the picture, go one tick mark to the left of the middle and one tick mark to the right. So that means one standard deviation to the left, and I need to go one standard deviation to the right. Go up and hit that bell. And maybe I'll improve my little bell there so it looks a little better. I want to get up there and then come right there. I'll like get it go up there and I'll like come down and then yeah, that looks better. That looks a little better. Let it hump over there a little bit more. Okay. There you go. Inside here, I want I'm going to shade. I need you to shade. Shade. And put the number 68%. And I'll say it in words. 68% of data in a bell-shaped bell -shaped distribution. <laughs> is within one standard deviation of the mean. Say again, 68% of data in any bell-shaped distribution all right, is approximately one standard deviation from the mean. Or if you want to say approximately 68%, that's what we talk in statistics. Approximately 68% of data is one standard deviation from the mean. Within. So one below or one higher, right? One tick mark this way, one tick mark that way. Cool. So that's why that number was given as the empirical rule, the very first number. Now, does this only deal with height of men? No, this goes for any type of what? Bell-shaped distribution. It could be height of women. It could be weight of babies, right? <coughs> when they're born. Well, anybody know what's the average weight of a baby when they're born? See, they know. They know. This is like it's roughly around seven pounds. They know this. Okay? Uh, it could be IQ scores. Maybe it's SAT scores. But there's a lot of these distributions that are roughly bell-shaped, okay? And we can deal with this. And we know that approximately 68% of data in any bell-shaped distribution will be one standard deviation for the mean. Now, I used to erase this and get this number going, but I always worry when I do that, I'd grade students' tests, and I'd be like, why are they messing this up? And I realized it. I go, I need to draw two of these separately. So I'm going to draw another one, okay? Identical, but I'm not going to shade in at 68%. But if you don't mind, I'm just going to go, Come back up, go back down. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect, right? Tick mark in the middle, 73, 76, 79, 67, 64, 61. It does not have to be perfect. Look how sloppy that bell is. That's okay. There's my bell. I'm going to label it again. This was 70, this was 73, 76, 79. 67, 64, 61. And you recall, 68% of data is within one standard deviation of the mean. Guess what this is dealing with? It's from the middle. It's from the mean. This time I'm going to go out two tick marks to the left, two tick marks to the right. From the middle, I'm going to shade. I'm going to shade. I'm shading a lot here. Man, this is almost the entire bell, isn't it? So guess what percent of data, approximately, is within two standard deviations of the mean? 95%. 95% of data, approximately 95%, of data in any bell-shaped distribution is within two standard deviations of the mean. And that was one standard deviation above the mean. That was two standard deviations above the mean. This was one standard deviation below the mean. That was two standard deviations below the mean. 
But 95% of data is within two standard deviations of the mean. So far so good? I don't think I have to draw a third picture, but I bet you know what happens here. 99%. I mean, that's almost 100%, right? Almost. <laughs> Guess how far out I'd shake. The whole I know you know it. You go out to three, right? Yeah. Now, why isn't that 100, though? We know oh, there's a few individuals in this world who are what? Except out here. Yeah. Okay. Does anybody know Shaq? Shaq Basketball? Yeah. Shaq O'Neal? Oh, yeah. Yep. Shaquille O'Neal. I mean, he's like, I know he's over seven feet tall. Right around there, so he'd be over here somewhere. So that's what we mean. So that's why it's not 100%, but you go three standardations from the mean, 99.7%. All right, that's the hardest part. On the last problem you test, and I have to have you draw one of these. But, and when I might do like IQ scores or SAT scores, but I have to give you these two numbers, don't I? Right? And if you're like, do I have to know those symbols? No, actually, I'll say, I'll say the population mean. I'll give it to you. I'll give you these standard deviation. I'll use those words. But once I give you those, you can build your picture, right? Start with the what? The mean, and then you can build three this way, three that way, right? Once you do that, I think you're going to be fine. So here come some questions for you. Ready? Letter up. Blank percent. 20. Because you're like, what kind of questions are you going to ask at the end of that? And I'll tell you which problem this is like the most is between 67 and 73, question mark. No come up with this. Oh, go ahead. Is it always going to be like three tick marks? Always. Okay. Right? We don't have to go 400. And those tick marks, they're called standard deviations, right? <laughs> but we don't have to go up four or five. If you went up four or five, we could. There's not much out there, is there? Right. That's what we're saying. We're like, we'll go up three and we'll get to this. Every time. Let, let that bell curve kind of flatten out right there. You know, you might even start flattening it out a little bit beforehand. Book does a lot better job with these nice bells. You'll look at those. Uh, so that's the first question. I think you'll have no problem doing it because you know the empirical rule. Um, how about this one? Less than 67. I can put inches. I want you to the symbol for inches. A little tick tick. So it's less than 67 or greater than 73. I'll put a question mark. And when I'm using the words less than and greater than, if you're thinking of a height of man, you could say what? If you want to change that to taller than or shorter than, please feel free to do that. Because I am talking about the height of man, true? In this problem, I'm talking about. Height of men, age 20 to 30. So I'm saying less than, greater than, I'm talking about their height. So if you want to go shorter than, taller than, that's absolutely right. I'm going to fill these in. And I got one more. I'll do is less than. So once you build these pictures, and you might just make one picture, we can answer these questions. All right, what percent is between 67 inches and 73 inches? What percent is between 67? Is less than 67 or greater than 73? And what percent is less than 64 inches? So for the first one, we did all this hard work, right? We know these numbers. We were given this. We drew a decent picture, right? The bell didn't have to be perfect. And what are we coming up for with that answer? 68. 68. And uh, if, if I just like, even on a test, if I just have a blank, we just make sure, just don't write that number. You always got to put the what with it? Percentage. percentage. Right? Unless you want to write 0.68. Make sure to put the percentage there, too. So I'll pretend like these weren't there. I'll put the symbol there. All right, this one's a little harder because this number is not showing up over here. What percent is, where's less than the 67? Over there, right? Yeah. Uh oh. But we're going to get it. And that says we're greater than, uh oh, that's over here. But she has an idea how to do this. What would you do? She starts with 100%. I love it. So brilliant. 
She goes, all right, we're going to get this answer. She knows that all this, all the men, it's about, it's got to be 100% of men, true? Mm -hmm. We're doing 100% of the men, so we're going to start with 100%. She's going to subtract this. Now, some of you do this mentally, which is awesome. You just do this in your head, but I'm going to write it down. I'm going to take 100%. I am going to subtract 68% to see what's left over in these two spaces here, in these two gaps. So what's in these two gaps? 32%. So does that mean there's 32% here and 32% here? No, you know what to do. Cut in half, right? Or divide by 2. What's 32% divided by 2? So let's go back to our picture. We didn't have to memorize that because we were able to do that quite quickly. True? We didn't have to memorize these numbers, but now I can go insert it. What's over here? 16. 16%. How much is over here? You want to double check? Add them all up. Does it add up to 100? Sure it does. Now for this answer. This word or, you know, welcome to statistics. And or we always talk about, we're talking about the summation. So they want you to actually add these two groups together. So what percent is less than 67 inches of those men, or greater than or taller than 72 inches? What's 16% plus 16%? Thank you. I just can't stump you anymore. I will not be able to stump you. That last problem on the test will not be able to stump you. You'll be able to get it. All right, let's try this one. But which pictures can be more helpful? This one. Because what number do they have there? 64, everyone were like, there's, there's no ball. We didn't make our little bar there. So let's use this image to get this solution. So forget the 68, forget the 16, block it out, true? We're going to use the what? 95. But this one's tough because I'm asking about a gap. I'm asking about that gap over there. You know what's amazing, though? I'm watching you. There's some people in this class just in their head going like this. And they're getting the answer in their head. That's so cool. I mean, it's great. But I'm going to do all the math here. Everything, again, has to add up to what? 100%. 100%.